This happened several years ago when I moved into a new apartment. I should mention that I'm female, and the place was older and on the edge of the city. During that time, it was all I could afford. The apartment itself was a small one-bedroom place on the fifth floor of a pretty tall building. I moved in with all my stuff, which was only a few boxes, and started to unpack. For the most part, I liked the apartment because the location was pretty good, and it was enough space for me. My hallway had probably 15 or 20 other units on it. I made maybe three or four trips back and forth from my car to my apartment, bringing everything in. As I was doing this, and on the last trip I made, I saw a man leaving his room a little ways down the hallway. He was the first neighbor that I had seen. I finished bringing things in, and then started unpacking. It took me basically the rest of the day to do so, and by nighttime I was all done. I didn't have to work for the next couple of days, so I got some food and stayed up late relaxing and enjoying my new place. I was up and watching TV when I heard a knock on my door. This was strange. It was almost midnight. I got up and walked over to the door, and I looked out the peephole. It was the guy who I had seen in the hallway earlier, one of my neighbors. It seemed a little bit strange to come to my door at this hour, but I decided to answer it. The guy was pretty tall, probably like 6'5". He had glasses and hair almost to his shoulders. When I opened up the door, he said hi to me. Then, he shook my hand and introduced himself. He told me that his name was Andrew, and he lived down the hallway. The guy seemed kind of awkward. The whole situation was kind of strange, but I thought that it was nice the fact that he came over to introduce himself to me. After I introduced myself back to him, we both stood there awkwardly for a few moments. Then, Andrew asked if I wanted to come over and have some coffee at his place. I told him no and said that it was late and I was going to bed. He asked if I was sure, and when I said yes, he said okay, and then I closed the door. Then I went back to what I was doing. I wasn't really that tired, but I didn't want to go to his place. I found it a little bit weird that he chose to come over and introduce himself to me so late at night. I stayed up for a while longer and then went to bed. The next day, I went out to get some groceries in the morning and was home for the rest of the day. I organized more of my things and did whatever for the rest of the day, but at night, once again, there was a knock at my front door. I got up and went to go see who it was. It was Andrew again. I opened the door to see what he wanted this time. Andrew said hi to me and then told me that he thought my mail got delivered to his place on accident. He said there was a package for me. I was a little bit confused, but curious what accidentally was delivered to him. He told me that he had it in his place and he said we could go get it now. I said sure and I walked out of my place and into the hallway. Then I followed Andrew down to his apartment. It was a few down from me and not that far at all. When we got to his place, he opened up the door and told me to go ahead inside. His place was somewhat dirty. He had a living room in the main area and then a bedroom off it, kind of like mine. As we walked inside, Andrew said that he kept the package in his bedroom for safekeeping. I followed him inside to the bedroom. When I got inside that room, there was far less furniture. Almost as soon as I walked in though, Andrew suddenly moved behind me. The door then swung shut and slammed. My immediate reaction was to run over to the door and try to get out. But as I made it there, I heard a click and when I tried opening it, the door was locked. I realized how stupid I had been. This guy already had come across as a little bit of a creep to me. How could I walk alone into his apartment late at night? I thought about how crazy his story sounded anyways. Why would he accidentally get one of my packages? I asked him what he was doing, but he didn't answer. I had my cell phone with me and I pulled it out, but there was no signal in there. Nothing would go through. I'm not sure where Andrew went, but I didn't hear him from the other side. I looked around the bedroom. There was hardly anything in there. A mattress in the corner, a rug, and a nightstand. It was a terrifying place to be. His window had a cover on it. I pulled the cover off to see if I could see anybody outside, but the window seemed to be painted black from the inside. I couldn't see out of it, and I couldn't open it either. I was desperate. I yelled and asked to be let out, but nobody answered me. I walked all around the room, wondering what I could do. There didn't seem to be anything, though. As time went by, I realized that I needed to think of something to get out of there. I kept trying my phone, and I went to all parts of the room, but I just couldn't get any signal. Finally, I went over to one of the walls. This was a wall that bordered the apartment next door. I started knocking on it, wondering if the people on the other side would hear, or if they were even home or awake. But after several minutes of that with no luck, I turned it up a notch. I started pounding on the wall as hard as I could. It started to damage it a little bit. I then took my elbow and rammed it into the wall. Some of the wall ended up breaking, and I started yelling as loud as I could and banging on the wall. After a minute or so of this, the door to the room that I was in opened. Andrew stood there inside the doorway. He yelled at me to stop, then he started approaching. 
I grabbed a small nightstand because it was the only thing in the room that I could grab. I held it up to defend myself. This didn't stop Andrew at all. He kept going towards me. I shoved the nightstand at him, which pushed him back a little bit, and this was just enough for me to be able to run past him and out of the room. I ran for the door, which I was barely able to get to before he grabbed me. I had the door open, but Andrew was struggling to keep me inside. I heard somebody walking down the hallway, though, into our direction, and I started screaming as loud as I could. When the person got closer, Andrew pushed me away, then he himself took off running out of the apartment and down the hallway. The person in the hallway told me that they lived next door and they were wondering what on earth was going on. I explained her the situation as I ran back from my apartment. The police were called, and Andrew was long gone by the time they got there. However, they were able to locate him not too long after that. I'm really lucky to have gotten away, and I'm especially grateful that the neighbor decided to come over and see what was going on. I'm a female who is currently 30 years old and this took place late last year in early November. My fiance and I had just bought a boating company in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. At the time we lived in LA and because we had bought the company, we had to move to Florida to maintain it. Life was kind of what you'd expect for Florida. It rained a lot and was almost tropical during the summer months. If you've been to Florida or live there, you'll probably relate to what I'm saying. Anyway, we had moved into a large, one-storied home appropriate for a family of four. We didn't have kids, but the house wasn't too expensive and we needed to find a new place. For the first month or so, the move had been well and we started to adapt to the new environment. In other words, things were going well for the most part. One day, my fiancé had gone into the office while I was homesick with the flu. At one point during the day, I remember going into the kitchen to get a snack to just have something in my stomach. Upon entering the kitchen full of unopened boxes, I for some reason get a weird feeling. It wasn't a bad feeling, but rather a feeling that made me alert or something. You know that feeling you get when you feel like someone's watching you? Yeah, I had that in spades. I hesitate before looking out the sliding glass door to see someone walking around my vegetable garden. By the looks of it, they looked like a younger adult in all black wearing a satchel. Now, this house had a gate on the side that only opened if you had the password. However, the password wasn't working, which indicated that he jumped the fence. The thing that really caught my eye was that he appeared to be pouring something around the garden. My initial instinct was to call my fiancé, but realized that he would get worried and try to take this into his own hands. Without any other options, I pick up the phone to call the police. The operator said they'd try to have someone there soon, but to just stay hidden in the meantime. This person continues to look around the garden as I run to my room and lock my door. All the while, I'm on my bed praying to God that he doesn't come inside or break in. Minutes felt like hours before hearing the police sirens from down the road. They got louder as they pulled into my house where I then heard some sort of commotion going on. Upon going outside, I see four police officers restraining this kid who appeared to be an older teen. However, he didn't try to get away. He kind of just stood there, accepting his defeat. As I spoke with the police, I then learned a shocking truth I didn't expect to hear. While they were restraining him, they managed to find several traces of liquid mercury, which is what he was using to put in our garden. It was then where I called my fiancé where he had to leave work to come home. Turns out, this teenager was actually our next door neighbor's son. Both his parents were devastated, apologizing to us for his actions. While we understood their pain, we ended up filing charges against the son for attempted murder. How he got a container of mercury, we have no idea. I'm still very thankful I caught him in the act, as I'm not sure if I'd still be writing this had I eaten the vegetables. He was arrested and put in jail for 10 years according to his parents. Later that same day, 
His parents had told us that their son was innocent and that he was just looking at our garden. Me, nor my fiancé, wanted to hear it. This story takes place when I had just recently moved into my new apartment. A really bizarre thing took place. This was almost two years ago now, but I will never forget it. My apartment that I was moving into was pretty new. The building was less than 10 years old, and it seemed really well maintained. It also wasn't that big. There were only a few units in each building, and there were two buildings total, then an office. There was a parking lot in the middle where basically everybody parked. My apartment had one bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, and a living room. There were also two closets aside from the one in my bedroom. One was a standard coat closet, and the other was more maintenance, like for my water heater and things like that. After I moved all of my stuff in, which took forever, I started putting everything where it belonged. I had a moving company help me get everything transported and up to my unit. I was on the second floor, so it wasn't too bad. So, the very first night, when I was setting everything up and whatnot, I was putting some things in my closet. I was trying to decide where to put everything, and at one point, I went inside the utility closet. When I was in there, I was just looking around, kind of wondering what I would put in it. I happened to notice something strange, though. There was like a panel on the back corner, kind of behind the water heater. I've always had a good attention to detail, and I almost didn't even notice it. This panel was rather large, and it was almost all the way on the floor. I got down on my hands and knees and examined it. The panel almost looked like a door that opened up through the wall. Beyond that wall was the next unit over. I wondered for a moment if that's in fact what it did, but I realized that that didn't make much sense. There was no handle to open it or anything like that, and when I messed around with it a little, it didn't seem that weird. I left it alone and went back to work. I was able to get a few more things organized before I called it for the night. Later on, I went to bed at probably about 10 o'clock. In the middle of the night, I woke up. I remember being wide awake and wondering why I had awoken. Normally, this didn't happen. Everything was pitch black and silent. After a few moments, though, I heard a noise. I just barely did hear it. It sounded like somebody was inside my apartment, walking. I laid frozen in bed. I couldn't believe what was going on. I thought to myself, remembering if I had locked my door, and I knew that I did. Then, I remembered that thing I thought looked like a door that led to the next unit over. Could that have been real? Who lived over there? Meanwhile, the footsteps got closer. Then, my bedroom door started opening. I closed my eyes and pretended to be asleep. There was nothing else I could do. I was just hoping that nothing bad would happen. Whoever was in there walked inside and took a couple of steps. Then they stopped. They stood there and didn't seem to move. This went on for a good two or three minutes. I couldn't take it anymore, and I opened my eyes. I couldn't tell who it was, but it appeared to be a man. He was standing about ten feet away inside of my bedroom. I couldn't make out any details because of how dark it was. I closed my eyes again and just hoped that whoever this was would leave. I was confident that I hadn't made a sound and that they thought I was sleeping. Finally, whoever was there turned around and left. They walked out of the room and then back towards where they had come from. I did not hear my front door open and shut, but I did hear that closet door open and close. This confirmed it to me. I laid there for the longest time. It took me a while before I could do anything. Finally, I got up and checked all around my apartment. Everything seemed to be in place as it was when I left it. I went back to bed after that. The next day, I got up and went straight for the office. The apartment only had a couple of employees. I spoke with a woman at the front desk and let her know what had happened. She seemed pretty confused. When I confirmed to her my unit number, she told me that nobody lived in the unit next to me. I couldn't believe this. The apartment staff decided to come out and examine it. When I showed it to them, they offered to cover it up, but I made the decision to just move. This was really creepy to me and I have the suspicion that it was somebody who worked at the apartment complex who was inside my apartment. If the unit to mine really was vacant, the staff would be the only ones with the keys. I'm not sure who exactly it was, but I just wanted to move out of there. Most of my things were still kind of packed up, and that's exactly what I did. To this day, I still wonder about that. Just a disclaimer, this isn't the type of story to have you on the edge of your seat. It is, however, one of the creepiest occurrences I've ever had, and this just goes to show you how the comfort of your own home can be dangerous. This happened about a year ago, back when I had graduated from college. I had just gotten a paid internship for my field of study as a computer technician. 
My duties were to basically assist companies with basic computer errors they may face. It was an easy and well-rewarding job for me, as I loved computers ever since I was a kid. At the time, inflation was through the roof, so I was extremely grateful for this job. The only part I didn't like about it were the hours. I had to get up at around 11pm and work well into the night till around 3am, so whenever I got home, I would always be tired. During this internship, I've been renting out this small one-bedroom home as a place to stay. I earned enough to pay for it, but my parents were proud of me for getting this job, which made them pay for half. One night, I had been at work during the middle of my shift when I get a call from my boss. He had told me that he was suspending operations until the next day due to a possible storm emergency. This resulted in me having to clock out and go home for the night. As you could imagine, I was drained from working and instantly fell asleep listening to the falling rain. I'd say I slept for a good three hours or so when I awoke to a noise from my room. It sounded similar to a knocking sound, but much more sudden and fast. I glance over at the clock. It was 4.07 AM and was still pouring outside. Figuring it was likely hail hitting the roof, I disregarded it and tried my best to go back to sleep. However, not even a minute later, I hear the same noise again, this time much louder. I felt my blood run cold as I heard this and realized it was coming from my wall. I was almost certain there was an animal living in my walls as I don't live too far from a wooded area. I slowly get up from my bed and put my sliders on and put my ear up against the wall. It was quiet for a good minute before the unexpected happened. A knock louder than ever hit the wall where I stumbled back where I just so happened to look up at the air vent. A quick flash of lightning illuminated what appeared to be someone's eyes looking at me through the vent. What disturbed me the most was their face. It was pale and this person didn't appear to have any eyebrows. That was the best description I could give as they then ducked back down inside of the wall. I locked eye contact with this person for a good second before running out of the house to call the police. Thankfully, the cops in my city are the type that takes their job seriously, so they were able to get here quickly. One officer stayed with me while the other one inspected the wall and claimed that it was too narrow for anyone to fit through. After hearing this, I checked the wall myself and even went as far as to take it apart to realize that he was right. Needless to say, both officers went out of their way to shine their lights and actually look inside. Nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary or misplaced, so I thanked them for their time and they left. It was then where I called my parents wanting to tell them about what I had seen. However, I must have caught them at a bad time, as they didn't want to hear it and claimed it was just night terrors. Now, I did have night terrors from my childhood that made its way into my adult years, but it was rare for me to have one. The next day, I went out to get drywall to replace the piece of wall I had taken out. I have never believed in the paranormal, but I have no other explanation for what I saw. Nothing has happened since, and I intend for it to remain that way. This is my horror story about when my wife and I moved into our new home a couple of years ago. I remember when we first looked at the house, we both loved it. The neighborhood was great, and the inside of the house was also really good. We knew that we would have to be fast in making an offer, and we did. It was a sort of high price, and we had to make a full price offer, but the house was just too good to pass up. We had already looked at many houses, and this one was by far the best. The sellers ended up accepting our offer, and we were excited to move in. We thought that living there was going to be great, but soon, strange things started happening. I remember within probably a week after moving in, my wife and I were awoken to the sound of a knocking coming from the front door. I got up out of bed and looked at the clock. It was 2 a.m. This was very strange. I told my wife I would go down and check it out. The knocking continued. 
I was hearing it still as I was walking down the stairs. When I got to the bottom of them, though, it stopped. I walked over to the front door and looked out. Nobody was there. I opened the door and looked around, but I couldn't see anybody. Whoever had been there must have left. I looked out into the street, but didn't see or hear any vehicles driving away either. I went back inside and back to bed after that. This was a strange and bizarre thing, but we figured it must be someone at the wrong house or something like that. But later on, maybe a few days later, during broad daylight, there was a knocking on the back door of our house. Both my wife and I were home then as well. We were in the kitchen, which is at the front side of the house, so we couldn't see it. It was strange for somebody to knock on the back door instead of the front. I walked over to see who was there, but by the time I got within sight of it, I couldn't see anyone. Once again, I opened the door and I looked around our backyard, but saw nobody. My wife watched out the front windows, but she didn't see anybody walking over there either. We wondered if the two times were the same person. I felt like it probably was. But that wasn't the end of strange things happening. Several days after this, my wife and I returned home one night to find that our mailbox had been run over it appeared. It had fallen over and was laying on the ground. After this incident, probably a week went by of normalness. Nothing strange happened, at least not that my wife and I were aware of. Then, one night, we were both at home sleeping. I woke up at some point during the night, and I heard the sound of something hit against our bedroom window. Our bedroom was on the second floor, so this was really weird. I sat up and listened. It happened again. It seemed as though something was being thrown at our window, like maybe a rock. I walked over to the window and looked out. I didn't see anybody. By this point, I was really frustrated with all of this going on. I kept watching out the window, waiting for whoever was there to show themselves. But I couldn't see them anywhere. They probably saw me at the window. There was also a good number of places that they could have been hiding, and with it being dark out, I couldn't see very well. I stood there for like 10 minutes, but never saw anybody and nothing else was thrown towards the window. After that, I went back to bed again. The next and final incident came two days later. It was the weekend and I was up late, much later than usual. My wife had gone to bed and I was finishing up some work downstairs in the living room. Most of the lights in the house were off. It was after midnight, but I'm not sure exactly what time it was. I just randomly glanced out the window though, and when I did, I saw somebody actually walking up the driveway. They weren't looking at me, and I don't think they could see me. At first, I couldn't tell who it was, but as they got closer, I recognized them. It was our next door neighbor. I couldn't believe it. I ducked down just to be sure that he wouldn't see me. When he got near the front door, he knocked on it. I walked over right away to confront him. When I got to the doorway, I saw him out the window looking at me on the other side. As soon as he saw me, we made eye contact, then he ran away. Now I knew who had been doing all of this. I was really in shock. I didn't know quite what to do. After that night, I decided to go over and talk to him the next day at his house, but he didn't answer the door. Nothing else that was strange happened after that either. He ended up moving out of the house about a year ago. We've lived in our neighborhood for nearly four years. A few houses down and across the street is a Filipino family. They're pretty nice and whenever we see each other, we always have small talk and we know each other by name. We moved in right before I gave birth to my oldest, so they always ask for the baby and they love seeing them. We have even had meals at each other's homes before. This summer, they had an older family member, maybe 55 to 60 years old, come to visit. We noticed him right away because he would always go for long walks and lingered a lot. One evening, the mother of the family introduced him as her father. He had recently moved and would be staying with them for a while before heading north to her sister's house. He was pretty new to the US and spoke a little English. Just enough to get by. He seemed nice enough, but as soon as we walked inside, I told my husband that he gave me a really weird vibe. I had never felt that way of any of the seven other family members from the home. I've been in their home and shared meals with them. They're very sweet and welcoming. My husband also told me that he did seem a little off, but we just chalked it up to cultural differences. Fast forward about a month. My mother-in-law and my mother came to visit at the very same time. They're in the driveway with our son. I run inside because I'm pregnant and I suffer from severe morning sickness. I come back out 15 minutes later and they're having a frustrating conversation with this man. 
He was trying to get one of them to drive him to the store and he would use a food stamp slash EBD card to buy their groceries and wanted them to give him cash. They both told him that they weren't interested but he just kept asking and lingering. When I went outside, I called out to my husband to come out and when he saw us, he walked away very quickly. Both of our mothers told us what had happened and how forceful that he was being with them. The next few days that I see him walking, we always wave and say simple pleasantries, but every time I would wave, he would take it as a sign to come over and try to have a conversation. I began to let him know that what he did with our mothers is very illegal and to be so forceful was really unnecessary. He said that he understood, but he would linger. It would always be at a moment where I was trying to strap my toddler to his car seat and I was rushing to get him to school. It would always take me about 10 minutes to get him to get the hint that I couldn't talk and he would slowly walk away and just linger in our driveway. It eventually got to the point where I would watch to see if he had walked past our house on his morning walk before venturing outside. I really just hated the awkward conversation. He would always seem to round the corner just as I finished strapping my son in the car and I was getting in. I would wave and then jump in quickly and drive off. It just felt really off, like he was waiting for me. One of our neighbors across the street one night told me that she got a weird vibe from him as well. And again, he always lingered. She told me that he did similar things with her when they were outside as well. They were opting to hang in the backyard with the kids just to avoid it altogether. Now, I usually work from home, but one day I went into the office and I was then alerted by the ring camera. This man was standing and looking in through our kitchen window, just peering and I could hear our pit bull barking at him. When he saw our dog, he jumped back and I used the microphone to say, Can I help you? What do you want? He looked absolutely shocked and then scurried away. I called my husband and I told him to play the video. We both thought it was really creepy. Whenever we saw the family walking that evening, we decided to bring it up to his daughter. She spoke to her father and he claimed that it never happened. We then showed her the video on her phone and he said that he must have gotten lost. The daughter seemed pretty annoyed by him and the entire situation. So him being weird kind of calmed down a bit after that I could see that his daughter was really annoyed by his behavior and as they were walking there was a really heated conversation. She later told me that he tends to be overly friendly and he really means no harm but she talked to him and he would leave us alone. I asked if he had some kind of mental issue or maybe Alzheimer's since he was always getting lost. She told me no and that he had always acted like that and that she couldn't wait until her sister was ready for him to be sent up north to her. There were a few other neighbors that had also complained to her and the homeowners association as well. Well, about two months later, I drop my son off to preschool. I get home and I have to rush in because I feel really sick. Usually I leave my car door open but something told me to lock it as soon as I got out. I did so as I was rushing inside. I would also normally leave the door unlocked if I was just going for a quick throw up session, but again, my instincts told me to lock the bottom and top lock. When I was in the bathroom, right by the front door throwing up my life, I then hear a rattling at the front door. Someone is turning the lock back and forth. Of course, my ring chimes and I then look at it in between heaves. What do you know? It's the old man and he's trying to get into our home. I go over to the microphone and then say, You're at the wrong house. To which he responds with, Let me in, now. I want to tell you something. Now, I kid you not, it was the best English sentence I had ever heard from someone who wasn't that good with English. I started to feel better pretty quickly and I was now on high alert. I responded with, what do you want to tell me? He looked right at the camera. Let me in your house, now! This is where I started to panic. He knew he was at the wrong house, but still he was continuing to try and break in. I respond. Please get off my property. I don't feel comfortable with you here, and I'm not letting you in my house. 
He then starts rattling at the door again really hard and tries to pull it open, and then starts knocking on the bathroom window. This is where I get pissed. Get the hell off my damn property right now. I'm not going to let you in. If you don't get the hell out of here right now, I'm calling the cops. He then steps back, gives the camera the middle finger, and scurries off. He disappears and I run upstairs and see that he's simply walking back to his house. I let our pit bull out of our bedroom as he had been going crazy during this whole ordeal. I call my husband and he tells me to call the daughter and tell her what happened. I call her and I tell her what happened and she told me not to let him in, ever. She began to warn me that he's been very inappropriate and forceful with all of the women in her family and she didn't want me to get hurt, especially being pregnant. She eventually comes over about an hour later and I show her the video. She's absolutely fuming over this and very apologetic and she begs me not to call the cops. She promises me he'll be gone within the next day. The next day, he eventually flies out and his daughter told him that he's no longer welcome in her home. He now lives up north somewhere in Maryland with his other daughter and probably harassing other people as well. I honestly really don't know what would have happened if I didn't follow my instincts that day. I'm just really glad I'm okay.